So if you're about to buy a secondhand bike, or you just want to perform a thorough check on your existing bike, then here's how to do an advanced M check so you can identify problems before they get really bad. an M check because basically you want to check the bike in an M shape from here up, down, cockpit and down to the front wheel. It's just making sure that you don't miss anything and I'm going to go through a really thorough check here which would be great if you're buying a new secondhand bike or if your existing bike is a few months old or starting to feel a bit ropey. So if you're new to us here then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on content like this in the future. So at the back wheel, there's quite a lot going on here. So this will be quite a lengthy one, but the sort of fatal things that you really want to check first are on the rims. So just make sure when you're cleaning it or looking over your bike, you want to check the rims. If they're aluminium and they're dented, you're probably okay. But if you've got carbon rims like I have, you want to check for any cracks there. Also, if your gearing is starting to get a bit sloppy, maybe it's not working so well, maybe it's getting noisy, then that's something you can look into. And we've done a more detailed video on that. So I'll leave that in the description below for you to look at. Uh, but just also check the cassette. So if you've got any wobble or movement here, then you might wanna take the wheel off and check it's done up tight. If you put it back on and it's still wobbling, then it might indicate that you've got some problems in your hub. Another good indicator is if you wiggle the wheel and there's movement, but you know you've done it up tight at the axle, then again, that might be a hub issue. So it could be that some bearings have gone in there and bearings are relatively cheap to change but the tools can be quite expensive. So you wanna think about whether you want to invest in those or take it to a bike shop. Now it's pretty hard to work out whether the cassette is worn or not, but a good indicator is to check the chain. So the chain will stretch over time and a chain checking device like this will measure how much it's stretched. Now, if you get to 0.5, you're gonna to wanna to start thinking about replacing that chain so that it doesn't overwear your cassette. Certainly, if you've got 11 or 12 speed, you absolutely wanna change it at 0.5. If you've gone up to 0.75 stretch, then you're probably gonna to need to change your cassette as well. If you have 10 speed or less, you can actually get away with going up to 0.75 before you need to change the cassette. But 11 and 12 speed, because there's more gears in there, the precision is a bit tighter. So you need to change it more regularly. Next up, I would check the spokes. This is something I'll do quite regularly after a hard weekend's riding or after a holiday or maybe after a few months of riding on a new bike. So you just wanna literally run your fingers around a tire like this, maybe give them a squeeze and check the tension on them. If you find anything that's really loose and actually wobbling, then you're gonna need to start tightening them up at the nipple end or maybe even go to a bike shop to see if they can fix that for you. Just because a nice evenly tensioned wheel is more likely to be safer and last a lot longer than you doing it up manually by yourself. Also check your tires. You wanna look at the nobbles here. They should be pretty square edged, not rounded and they shouldn't have any cracks or kind of mouths in them because that's a sign that they're starting to really wear out. And if it's on your existing bike, that might be fine for you, but if you're buying a second hand bike, then replacing these could be anything from 40 to 70 pounds per tire. So you wanna consider that that might actually cost you a fair bit of money. Also do check the sidewalls for any metal shards coming through, any threads coming through where the rubber is starting to wear away and check for any holes around the tires in between the nobbles as well, because that means they could give up while you're riding. 
jockey wheels are often really forgotten about, mainly because you don't see them, but they will wear out. They are only plastic and also the bearings can go inside them as well. So do have a look at the teeth, make sure they're not really, really pointy or make sure you've still actually got some teeth in there. You can flick your clutch off and manipulate the derailleur move the chain out of the way and just move the jockey wheels around. Make sure that they actually spin. Otherwise, you might need some new ones because the bearings are starting to go. The bottom bracket is a hard one to test without taking it all apart. But some general tips is if you've got it in a stand, you can hold the chain stay here and pedal through. And if you feel any grinding or rumbling in the frame, it might be some grinding coming from the bearings being quite dry. Also, you can grab hold of the crank arm and give it a wiggle just to make sure there's no play in it. If there is, it's either not done up tight or there's some bearing issues in your bottom bracket. So moving into the center here, we're gonna be checking the frame itself and the suspension as well. So with the frame, you wanna check for chips and obviously paint chips are frustrating, but they're not really a big problem. I would check for proper chips that go into the carbon. If you've got a carbon front end, if you've got a aluminium bike or even an aluminium rear triangle, you want to start looking at the welds as they can be things that fatigue over time and start to form cracks. If it's your bike that you've purchased, you can probably consult a, the manufacturer or the shop that you bought it from if you start to see cracks. But if you've got a secondhand bike that you're looking at, that's probably not gonna transfer over to you. So I'd probably leave that one be. So next up, you wanna do a bolts and bearing check. So obviously you've got bolts at seat clamps and you might wanna check your cranks are tight and maybe your bottle cage. But if you've got a full suspension bike, then you might wanna check the linkage bolts as well, cause they can work loose. And to check the bearings inside them, then that can be quite tough. But a uh, handy tip, if you take all of the air out of your suspension, or if you've got a coil like me, you might have to take that out. Put it in a stand like this. You can actually move the suspension around and feel if it's grindy or notchy, or if it just sticks in place, then you definitely need some new bearings there. Suspension can be hard to check if you're not an expert, but generally your travel should be cycling through smoothly and you can check to see if your stanchions have any scratches on them. You don't want scratches because that could let air into the chamber and it won't work so well. You can replace these if you want to, but it can be quite an expensive thing to do. Also check the seals on your forks and the seals if you have them around your rear shock as well. If you have bleed nipples on the back like this one, if you're getting that quite regularly, then that's probably a good indicator that your seals are damaged. So you might wanna consider a new lower leg service at the very least and get some new seals in there. A lower leg service should probably be performed every few months at least every six months. And you can send off your rear to an expert as well if you're not comfortable doing that. You can check your dropper post in a similar way to your suspension. You shouldn't have any scratches on the shaft here as that's gonna pull air into the seals. If it's not working great, if it's slow to release or slow to go down, then it's probably a cable issue and you might wanna start messing around with the barrel adjuster to tighten things up or you might just need a new cable. If it's generally working fine, but it's a bit sticky and a bit notchy, then it might be time to start thinking about servicing it or even at least getting some grease underneath the collar here. Over at the front of your cockpit here, the easy things to keep on top of are your cables. And obviously you wanna check for any wear or rubbing because even if they rub against the frame, you may not be bothered by that, but rubbing the outer hose on a brake could be pretty fatal if you start to get any leaks of hydraulic fluid from there. 
Equally, keep on top of any crash damage or scratches on your handlebars, especially if you've got carbon handlebars because you don't want them to fatigue and fail while you're riding. Equally, if you're ever tightening anything up, please make sure you use a torque wrench because that will stop overstressing handlebars and they won't fail while you're riding either. While you're at the front of the bike, it's a good idea to check your brakes. You should be doing this regularly anyway, and hopefully you'll notice if they change while you're riding too. But generally, you don't want your levers to be going all the way back to the bars. This could be a sign that your pads are wearing out, or it might be that the fluid in the hoses is getting a bit old, or it might be contaminated. So if they start to feel really spongy, and they're not working too well, then it's a sure sign that you need to get those bled or serviced at your local bike shop if you're not comfortable doing it yourself. The headset is one of those things that do tend to go over time. You'll notice that if you're in a stand, it should move really smoothly and really freely. If it's not, then you might wanna think about greasing that up or if it's getting notchy, then you're probably gonna need to replace that soon as well. Another common problem is sometimes they will work loose. So while the bike is on the ground, if you give the handlebars a turn and apply the brakes, then you can rock it forwards and backwards. And if there's any movement around the cups here, or if there's any knocking, then it's a sure sign that you might want to check the tightness of that. So you're going to need to undo the stem and re-tighten up the headset and then redo your stem. Down to the front wheel, you should be checking it in a similar way to the back, checking the tires, check the rims, check the spokes, and check to see if it moves. But also, don't forget to check your disc brakes. Make sure the bolts are up nice and tight. Make sure your calipers are up nice and tight. And maybe while well, you've got the time, take out the pads and check the life of those too. Well, hopefully that's helped you out with an advanced M check and maybe you've identified a problem before it got really bad. But if I've missed anything out, then let us know in the comments below and help out the GMBN community going forward. But for now, thanks for watching. Bye.